Hello and welcome to North Penn News. I'm Sarah Conant. And I'm Jesse Alexander. In our first story, the President of the United States, William Jefferson Clinton, recently visited Montgomery County and 94 North Penn students at the rare, had the rare opportunity to be at his post State of the Union address. Over 5,500 people packed into Norristown Area High School's gymnasium to catch a glimpse of the President, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton, Vice President Al Gore, and his wife Tipper Gore. They each spoke at the prep rally-like crowd about the importance of educational reform, protecting Social Security for the future, and working together as a nation. Interested in getting the experience of seeing the president firsthand. I think that's an experience that's probably once in a lifetime for most people, and to be able to see him at, see him in such an influence, like at an age where he kept such an influence on me, I felt was very important to me. I thought that even though he gave credit to the baby boomers and what a great job they did, that he's putting more emphasis on the youth of America and how bettering our education is going to make the future of America that much better. It was important to me because when I grow up I want to be a social studies teacher and government and politics is specifically what interests me. So I thought that it would be a good experience and something to tell like in the far future and near future and it would just be a great experience. The majority of students chosen to attend the event were from the student government and media organizations. Others were chosen by a random lottery. To top an unforgettable, unforgettable experience, some students were even able to shake hands with the president. Thursday was a special day in the history of Knapp Elementary School with the opening of its new library. Library here at Knapp Elementary School. Kelly Franklin has the scissors. A lot of pictures are being taken. The ribbon is being cut as we speak. Here the activities were highlighted by visits from two authors. Dan Gutman and Kay Winters spoke to students explaining what it takes to be an author. Some students had a chance to eat lunch with the authors and ask them questions. The six-month-long project has turned out to be a success for all of NAP students. North Penn High School chorus and band students were treated to a performance by the Yale student group Mixed Company. The group performed songs a cappella and also performed several comic skits, including one about completing a college interview and one about the Yale-Harvard football rivalry. The 17-group member includes North Penn alumni, Cuba Desai. The class of 2000 has been planning a variety of service projects throughout the year to help the less fortunate. The first project of the year was held in November when the class visited the elderly at Gwynedd Square Center for Nursing and Convalescent Care. The students helped the residents build gingerbread houses and spent time sharing stories with their new friends. The second service project was held later in November when the students helped to prepare a meal and provided dessert for the needy at Manna on Main Street. Elementary students across the districts have been, have been competing in the National Geographic Geography Bee. Students answer questions provided by a National Geographic testing their own knowledge of the world. Nash Elementary School's champion is Thomas Rizzo. David Farnoosh is Oak Park's champion, while York Avenue's top geograph geographer is Thomas Michener. The winners will now take a written test to determine if they will move into state competition. March Madness will return to the North Penn High School District during the 8th Annual 5th Grade Basketball Tournament. This year's games will be held at Gwenor Elementary School from March 1st through the 30th. Teachers interested in sharing their own teams should contact either Chris Sylvester at Oak Park or Kathy Rhodes at Gwenor. Course selection for the 1999-2000 school year begins in early February with these very important dates. February 2nd is Pendale's incoming 9th grade parent course selection night at 7 p.m. Penbrook's incoming 8th and 9th grade parent course, course information night will also be held on February 2nd at 7.30 p.m. February 4th will be North Penn High School's course selection night for parents at 7.30 p.m and Penfield will be holding their incoming 8th and 9th grade parent course selection night on February 11th at 7 p.m. All of these meetings will be held in the school's auditoriums. I'm going to Disneyland. That's what the students of the Penbrook Middle School Jazz Band thought as they headed to sunny California. 
The jazz band was, only, was one of only two middle school jazz bands to attend the International Jazz Educators Association Conference in Anaheim, California, as well as the only middle school band from the United States. The other band arrived all the way from the former Soviet Union. The students worked hard both in and outside of school to prepare for the trip. The band played an hour concert and their show, will in, in, their show included solo accompaniments by professional musicians Mike Vox and Vaughn Nark. An education in the real world, as I tell them. They're going to spend four days with adults um, in an adult hotel, um, spending time with adult musicians that, that make their living as artists. So I think it's a great thing for our kids and it's something they, they wouldn't get in any other situation. Congratulations to a group of talented musicians on a great accomplishment. Pendale's seventh grade class traveled to New York City recently to view a performance of a, of a Christmas cowl at Madison Square Garden. This was a culminating activity to reading the classic Dickens short story in English class. Several students from Penfield Middle School have been honored by the Institute for the Academic Advancement of Youth. 16, 8th, and 9th graders were recognized for their outstanding SAT scores in the spring of 1998. The Pennsylvania State Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance has commended North Penn High School's Gina Ward for her extensive participation at their annual competition. She served as a presenter, provided demonstrations, and presented a pre a poster presentation on quality physical education. Ms. Ward is a physical education teacher at North Penn High School. And also, Gwinnett Square librarian Kay Knuckle, Kunkel recently visited CBS this morning for a performance with the Bach Choir of Bethlehem. Kay has been a member of the choir for 11 years. This year, the choir is celebrating its 100th anniversary. Stay with us. We'll be right back with scholarship information and more North Penn news. Go for a mouthful. Go for the fun. Go, on, go for go cake. Go for cake for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes. Exercised lately. Till you explode. Welcome back to North Penn News. Several scholarships are now due in the Future Plan Center. In February, the Keystone Farm Credit Scholarship for seniors is due on February 1st. Also on February 1st, the Pennsylvania Association of Educational Secretaries and Office Personnel Scholarship for seniors is due. The Pennsylvania Governor's School for Health Care, Teaching, and Agriculture applications are due on February 3rd. There are also many scholarships due in late February and March. Please see Mrs. Toyota Keller for applications and more information. SATs will now be offered at North Penn High School on January 23rd, 1999. The registration deadline and the late registration deadline for January tests have already passed, but the test will also be offered on March 20th, 1999. The registration deadline for the March test is February 12th. The Future Plan Center can answer any questions regarding the SATs. The cold weather has arrived, and with it comes the possibility of school delays and closings. In case of inclement weather, tune your set to Channel 16 the night before and turn it on the next day for up-to-the-minute information on inclement weather closings and cancellations. You can also call the Informa phone at 215-368-7663 or tune into 1440 WNPV and listen for school code 303. There will, there will be an exit counseling session for retiring school district employees on Thursday, April 22nd at 4.30 p.m. in their Educational Services Center. PSERS representatives will conduct this session. The Human Resources Department will need to know if you are planning to attend the sessions. If you, if you are to participate, please call the Human Resources Department at 368 9800 extension 218 by April 9th to reserve your space. The North Penn School District is looking for certified teachers to substitute in all subject areas and grade levels. 
Substitute candidates must have at least a bachelor's degree. The district is also looking for substitutes to fill secretarial and clerical positions, cafeteria aides, library aides, and special education aides. Interested persons should contact Dr. Joseph Conley, the Assistant Director of Human Resources, for an application packet. Call 368-0400, extension 216, or write North Penn School District at 401 East Hancock Street, Lansdale, Pennsylvania, 19446. To all North Penn secondary students and parents, if you have not yet returned the Internet User Agreement Form, the North Penn High School District, or I'm sorry, the North Penn School District is asking that they are be returned as soon as possible. The policies were sent home in the fall with a self-addressed stopped stamped return envelope. If you did not receive one or have misplaced it, please contact the North Penn Technology Department at 368-9800 extension 213 for another copy. The North Penn High School Booster Club invites the parents of all athletes to attend monthly meetings on the first Monday of every month. The club sponsors three awards desserts and also provides the MVP trophies to each team and the commemorative t-shirts to each championship team. Please contact June Brown at 610-584-9684 for more information. The Booster Club supports all 25 athletic teams in the high school. And finally, the North Penn School District Board of School Directors will hold its monthly work, ses work session on Tuesday, February 9th, and its action agenda meeting on Thursday, February 18th. Both meetings bring at, begin at 7.30 p.m. and take place at the Educational Service, Services Center. And that about wraps it up for this edition of North Penn News. For the entire North Penn News team, I'm Sarah Conant. And I'm Jesse Alexander. Sports Night with Kyle Berger is up next. Stay tuned. out with a pretty trashy circle. The circle that helps this circle by recycling trash. We sort glass, plastic, separate cans, stack newspapers and magazines. Now, thanks to us, there are lots of products made from things we've already recycled. This cereal box wants your Sunday paper. These paper clips, in a more daring life, a 56 convertible. The circle works like this. It starts when we recycle trash at home and at work. It's completed when we buy products made from or packaged in recycled materials. How do you know the difference? Check the label for something called post-consumer recycled content. It looks like this. Make a mental note. Then buy the highest percentage of it you can find. You'll save a tree, you'll save energy, and in your own way, you'll help save the world. Complete the circle. Call 1-800-CALL-EDF for your free buy recycled shopping guide. 1-800-CALL-EDF. Be cool about fire safety. Did you know that many fires started because kids played with matches and lighters? It's really sad. The fire started with matches and lighters for thousands of people last year. Like parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters. If you ever see matches or letters, don't touch them. Uh-oh! Somebody left out matches and a lighter. Remember... Wow! Keep your eyes open, and if you see these, tell a grown-up right away. But never touch them, and you'll be a real superhero. Like a deputy fire marshal? Exactly! Don't touch matches or ladders. Tell a grown-up instead. Be cool about fire safety. <laughs>
Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Sports Night. I'm Kyle Berger. On this week's show, we'll be taking a closer look at the North Penn ice hockey team with captains Ben Davis and Greg Ferguson. But first, let's take a look at the week in North Penn sports. Congratulations are in order for North Penn football star Dave Coslow, who was named to the Parade Magazine All-American team this week. He was named to the team as a defensive lineman, where he also earned first-team All-State honors this year. Coslow is the first player in North Penn history to be named to this team, and will be playing next year on a full ride for the Nittany Lions of Penn State. From the gridiron to the sidelines of the football field now, where the 16-member cheerleading squad is going to Disney World. They won't just be there to go on Space Mountain, though, because the cheerleaders are headed south for the National Cheerleading Championships. They qualified for the competition by virtue of a fourth-place finish at the regional championships held earlier in Scranton. The competition is held in Disney's MGM Studios from February 5th through the 9th. The North Bend wrestling team rebounded from two tough losses to Central Bucks East and Neshaminy to come back and hammer Abington 48-10 last Wednesday. The Knights won 11 of the 13 bouts and received pins from freshman Dave Witt and seniors Kevin Hammond and Jeff Foldebauer. The Knights have evened their record up to 4-4 four and, four and host Harry S. Truman this Saturday. In the pool this week, the North Penn swimming teams had mixed results against the Green Hornets of Emmaus. The Maidens dropped their second meet of the year, losing 110-75 to Emmaus. North Penn only managed to win three events and Nicole Seward won two, including the 500 freestyle and the 200 individual medley. Valerie Hendricks won the diving competition for the Maidens. The Knights kicked it into high gear against Emmaus, led by an incredible individual effort from Dominic Zabo. The junior swimmer ripped through the individual medley relay in pool record time. He also won the 100 breaststroke and was a part of the winning 200 medley relay and 400 free relay. The 116 to 70 victory for the Knights was their biggest win of the year, and they continue their undefeated dual meet streak at 175 wins. 173 meets consecutive dual meets won, and you know, Emmaus is a serious threat to that streak, and we like to come out and perform and defend our streak. That's, I mean, it's a real important to our team. Uh, they know year in and year out that uh, Emmaus is going to be very difficult, uh, and uh, it's definitely one of the best meets on the schedule. So I think they look forward to it uh, when the season begins. They're always looking forward to swimming Emmaus. Going into their game against Central Bucks East last Tuesday, North Penn was easily considered the underdog. The Knights almost played the spoiler in the game against the Patriots, falling just short in a 75-63 loss. The difference in the game was a 10-0 run by East to start the fourth quarter. Leading the Knights in a losing effort was Justin Hughes, who dropped in 25 points. Jay Joseph added 19 points of his own and swatted Patriots star Brian Scott on three separate occasions before fouling out in the fourth quarter. And finally, the indoor versions of the North Penn track teams did well at their recent competition. The Maidens picked up several medals at Lehigh University. Erica Jaros led North Penn with a third place in the high jump. Michelle Vaughn was fourth in the shot put. Erica Parker was fifth in the quarter mile. And the 4x800 relay team of Katrina Brown, Diane Schillo, Jess Plawa, and Megan DeSimone took sixth. The North Penn Knights track team was led by Sean Grimison, who took second in the long jump, and the distance medley relay team of Adam Decker, Ed Hankin, Jim Farris, and Lee Benedet, who also took second. The 4x800 relay team of Matt DeFrancesco, Brad Mayer, Dan Atkiss, and Matt Pulinski finished in fourth. And that's your look at North Penn Sports. Stay with us, though, because after the break, we'll be talking hockey with Ben Davis and Greg Ferguson. Back after this on North Penn Television. Cover your face with your hands. You just 
Hi, welcome back to Sports Night. Right now we're joined by two members of the North Penn Ice Hockey Club, Greg Ferguson and Ben Davis. First off, we'll uh, start with you, Ben. 7-8 and eight is your record so far this year. A lot of young guys on the team. Just give a brief summary of the season so far for us. Um, well, we've been playing hard, um, considering we only have one practice a week and one game a week. And um, we have a fairly young team and fairly unexperienced, and I feel that we're playing pretty well compared to most of the other teams in the league and for the situation that we're in right now. Greg, uh, both you guys are alternate captains on the team, so you have some leadership role. You're both seniors. Uh, ben had talked about one practice a week, one game a week. It's kind of hard to keep some consistency, kind of get on a hot streak if you're only playing one game and having one practice a week. It's tough because uh, after the practice, we might not have the game till Thursday, so you have a couple days off, and sometimes you don't even have a game that week. So it's just the layoff really, really kind of hurts us. If we had two practices, it really helped, but you know you have to make do, and so every time we just you know go out as hard as we can, see what happens. Okay, Ben, uh, new coach this year. Uh, Mr. Theodore, uh, he's been with you guys for a while as an assistant, but stepping up into a, a head coaching position for the first time. Has he altered the system for you guys on offense and defense, or are you pretty much staying with what you've had in the past? Well, uh, our previous coach, uh, Tony Moriello, he, um, he ran a, a few good systems, and I guess uh, Theodore kind of uses them as a basis for the systems that he uses now, some, somewhat along the same lines the system that we use for the, the bigger teams like uh, the Rocks and the Tenets and the GAs. But um, yeah, he, he changed it up a little bit this year, but not much. Okay. So. Greg, uh, you lost a lot of kids last year to graduation, several seniors, uh, namely Kurt Kaufman, who is one of your stars. How have you guys dealt with having, you said there's a lot of seniors on the team, but a lot of first year varsity players among those seniors. How, how has the season gone with trying to get these guys into the swing of things on the varsity level? Um, yeah, we did get a lot of new kids, uh, mostly like uh, JV players coming up for their like senior year for on varsity. And you know, after the the first five games or so, like you could really see that they're nervous, but a lot of them are settling in and really starting to you know pick up their performance. Okay. Ben, you had a great run last year. Your team did with the uh, Flyers Cup, got deep into that tournament, which is pretty prestigious in the area. Two thirds of the way through the season right now, just one game under 500. Is your goal as a team still to make at least qualify for the Flyers Cup? Um, yeah, I think, I think along that lines, yeah, it's about right. Um, it's going to be tough, like Ferg said, you know, we have a pretty young team, pretty inexperienced, but we got a good group of guys, like to work hard. I think it's a pretty good goal to look forward to. How about you, Greg? What's your take on, on the rest of the season? Uh, we have a lot of tough games coming up. We have like a stretch where we play Rock, GA, Tenet, like all within a couple of weeks. We have like six of our last like what seven games we have left are against them, and uh, it's going to be tough. But if, I think if we really like you know dig down and come out like come out really strong, that we can probably make it back to the Flyers Cup. Okay, Ben, uh, your goalie this year, Jason Fendo, also backed up by Kevin Hayes. You know some of the scores you look at a loss six nothing to William Tennant. But really, these guys are really keeping in the game by and large. They've, I've been to a couple games myself, and it seems that, that Jason and Kevin are just playing an outstanding game between the pipes for you guys. Yeah, Jason, he's, he's, playing a, he's had a good year. I mean, you look at the games, I mean, 7-0 seven, seven the first time we played Tenet, and um, I guess 6-2 when we played uh, GA, and the last game that we played Tenet, 6-0. I mean, they average about 40-some shots a game on us, and... I mean, he's not playing that bad of a game, so he's having a great season too. So, okay, Greg, uh, you and Ben both play forward and defenseman. Um, how how has the defense been for you guys this year? As Ben said, you know, you're giving up a lot of shots. Do you focus in the game against teams such as Germantown Academy Council Rock? They're going to pepper your goalie with shots. Do you do you look to, you know, kind of? Put, a, put an umbrella on the defense and, and stop them from getting the, the close-in shots and keep it to the perimeter. How do you guys work your defense in that? Uh, that's basically what we do. We kind of play like a modification of, the, of a box and one against uh, like the stronger teams. And uh, we, that's like the main point of our defense is to keep shots to the perimeter where our goalie can like easily see it, get a good look, and make the saves. And they've been doing that all the time, but it's every like once in a while they'll sneak a guy in, we'll have a little breakdown, and it costs us. So. Like our goalies have been doing their job. We just, you know, got to, got to get it back on the, back on the, you know. I don't know. <laughs> got to just refocus and get back going on good defense. 
Okay, let's change gears a little bit, guys. Ben, uh, both you guys are seniors, as we said. Uh, next year, Ben, you're looking at a couple colleges, probably not to play hockey, but uh, where are you probably going to go next year? Um, I'm looking at St. Joe's uh, University of Central Florida and East Carolina University. I'm uh, looking to maybe play a little hockey at St. Joe's, maybe not, maybe play a little lacrosse. See how things work out. Not a lot of hockey in Central Florida. Nah. Well, they actually have a team. Yeah. So, I don't know. We right. might. Greg, uh, for you, where are you going next year? Uh, I also looked at St. Joe's and uh, Dickinson College. I don't think I'll be playing any hockey. Maybe like for a club team or maybe like a like a, you know over 18 league when I get like when I'm home from school. But other than that, you know, just studies and just college experience. Do you play lacrosse as well? No, I play tennis in the spring. Okay. So you're not looking forward to that at all? Uh, it depends. Like, I'll see if I want to, you know, maybe, like, try out for a team or something like that. I just I see, like, what schedule's like in college. I don't see what it's like. Okay. Uh, thanks for being on the show, guys. That's all the time we have. Be sure to catch the North Penn hockey team as they play Hatboro Horsham next Wednesday at the Warwick Twin Rinks. From the entire North Penn television crew, I'm Kyle Berger, and I'll see you at the game.